Hi, I'm Bruce Ray Rick, and I was asked to do this video proving cannabis laws, income tax, gun control, and all those are unconstitutional. They derive from an unconstitutional jurisdiction. The American people were deceived out of their constitutional standing in law, and the constitutional standing in law was switched to a corporate standing in law where they became owned corporate property, corporations owned by another corporation. Here's how they did it. In 1862, while the Civil War was going on, Congress took it upon themselves to redefine the meaning of a word, person, to mean a corporation. So in 1868, when the 14th Amendment made all persons, which is corporations, citizens of the United States, and subject to the jurisdiction thereof, here's what they did. Let's look at the term United States. This term has several meanings. Black's Law Dictionary makes that clear. One meaning is Title 28, Subsection 3002, Part 15A. United States means a federal corporation. By making you a citizen of Washington, D.C., which is United States, Washington, D.C., Incorporated, doing business as the United States, February 21st, 1871. <clears throat> when they, on the last page of the 14-page document, when Washington, D.C. declared it, uh, became a corporation, they declared themselves to be the owner and head and successor of all corpora said corporations and all the property of said corporations. You and everything you own. All your stuff. So can a corporation that owns another corporation command it what to do? Sure. You became chattel property. You became an owned corporate asset. You became a corporation owned by another corporation. Notice all crimes. Title 27 of the federal Code of Federal Regulations, Title 27-72.1. All crimes, state or federal, no matter which one, are commercial crimes. Every one of them. Because a corporation is a person within the meaning of the 14th Amendment. You. <laughs> you see, the 14th Amendment, created or at least recognized on July 28, 1868, a citizen of the United States, as distinct of that of the state. The state citizen is the one the Constitution originally created. That one will be found at Article 4, Section 2 of the United States Constitution. The citizen you are, if you're a citizen of the United States, is a 14th Amendment fictional creation known as a, a, as a person or citizen of the United States. Same thing. Notice all the laws apply to persons and citizens of the United States. The 16th Amendment, income tax, they say it's unconstitutional. So how do they get past that? The tax only applies to persons and citizens of the United States. It's a corporate tax. <laughs> so, there, so is this lawful? How is it illegal? How is it illegal to change your standing in law from being a citizen of a constitution to being a, owned, a corporation owned by another corporation subject to the jurisdiction thereof? It's not lawful. It was, even if it was, if the 14th Amendment was properly ratified, let's take a look at the Supremacy Clause of the United States Constitution found in Article 6, Paragraph 2 which holds the Constitution to be supreme law of the land and strikes anything out of its way nullified that tries to supersede it. The 14th Amendment created a different government, a different citizenship, with a different jurisdiction than what the Founding Fathers gave them. That's the reason the 10th Amendment doesn't apply to a 14th Amendment citizenship. There's no boundaries there. There's no perimeter on how far this corporate jurisdiction will go. Now, does the Congress know of this fraud? Oh, sure they know. 1957 Georgia Memorial to Congress. They know. The 1967 Congressional Record memorialized on the Senate floor, page 15641 through 15646. They know.
and the most recently updated national state of emergency from two, uh, November 26, 2008, the CRS report to Congress, page 5 of that 19-page document, which is found at CRS-2, top paragraph, makes clear Executive Order 6 ordered the 14th Amendment ratified, Executive Order 7 ordered it lawful and published. Nowhere in the written letter of the Constitution is it lawful to ratify an amendment to the Constitution with any form of executive order. But these two aren't even real executive orders. Executive Order 6 and 7, as the CRS report makes clear, was only had the signature of the Secretary, not the President, Andrew Johnson, who was against the 14th Amendment, cr saying it created a de facto government, which it did. <laughs> Let's look up de facto government here. Black's Law Dictionary, <clears throat> fourth edition. Y'all can get these on eBay for like $20 used, but it's good to have a Black's Law Dictionary. I love them. One that maintains itself by display of force against the will of the rightful legal government and, ex and is successful, at least temporarily, in overturning the institutions of the rightful legal government by setting up its own in lieu thereof. The 14th Amendment created a different government, a different citizenship, and a different jurisdiction. The Founding Fathers didn't give the government the jurisdiction to do what it's doing today. Cannabis laws included, gun control included. See, the 14th Amendment makes you subject to the jurisdiction thereof. Subject to Black's Law Dictionary, 4th edition. Liable, subservient, inferior, obedient to, governed, or affected by. Wow. <laughs> That's a hard, that's a, that's a far cry from the word free. Black's Law Dictionary, free, not subject to legal constraint of another. Unconstrained, having power to follow the dictates of his own will, not subject to the dominion of another, not compelled to involuntary servitude. Used in the sense as opposed to slave. Word for word, Black's Law Dictionary, y'all. See, the 14th Amendment made you an owned piece of property. You see, when, the, when, when in Washington, D.C. in 1871, after it created the citizenship of the United States, incorporated, doing business as the United States, and declared itself to be the owner and head and successor of said corporations in the United States and owners of their property thereof. After making you a corporation, that's all your stuff. That's why you owe so much on the national debt. That and 14th Amendment. Section 4 makes you responsible for the national debt and goes on to say you don't have no right to question the validity of it. You're subject to the jurisdiction thereof. They can't say they don't know. I mean, this is, this is not nothing that Congress don't know. I mean, 1957, the Georgia Memorial to Congress, they know. The 15647 Congressional Record, page 15641 through 15646. The CRS report from November 26, 2008, CRS-2, which is the fifth page of that 19-page document, top paragraph, makes clear Executive Order 6 ordered the 14th Amendment ratified. Executive Order 7 ordered it lawful and published. And both Executive Order 6 and 7 were never even signed by the President. Even though, even if they were signed by the President, there was no lawful jurisdiction given in the Constitution to ratify an, a constitutional amendment with an executive order. Especially two of them, that's fake. Especially when the President, Andrew Johnson, was against the 14th Amendment, like we've already pointed out. So the 14th Amendment created a different citizenship than the Constitution originally created in Article 4, Section 2. Congress also set up a different court system for the 14th Amendment citizenship. We were originally at Article 3, Section 2, Clause 1, Jurisdiction and Law and Equity. Now you're in equity at law because a corporation's a person within the meaning of the 14th Amendment. That's pretty much in summation. I have other videos that get into much more detail that break this down if you really want to get into more details. All of, all of those can be found at DirtyUncleSam.com. I'm the owner there also. As well as ProveIt'sReal.com if anyone thinks they can prove the 14th Amendment's real. They have a right to collect the money that was pledged from the people that pledged it if they possibly can. You can't. The Supremacy Clause strikes it with null if it was properly ratified and it wasn't. And your cannabis laws, gun control, income tax, every jurisdiction that has every law that everyone's complaining about, Tea Party folks included, comes from this commercial jurisdiction. 
How do I know? There's no other jurisdiction anymore. After 140 years, every part of our, of our government has become corporate. And you really want to know something bad? Executive Order 12803, 1992, privatized the United States. And, that would be a, and, and their assets, too. And you're one of their assets as their corporate property, chattel property. Sorry, that's, that's just how they're applying jurisdiction. Until the American people wake up to this deception, they'll never do anything about it. Until then, all the pro-cannabis groups and all the pro-gun groups and all these other groups that claim to be patriotic groups that don't have a clue, the Constitution that they think they've taken an oath to uphold and defend has the 14th Amendment in it, so it's fraudulent. And that's how they made us corporations from an unlawful jurisdiction that happened during the Civil War. We've been that way ever since. They just never told us. They didn't tell us this in school. Heck, they told us the 14th Amendment was real. They practice it everywhere you go. I mean, all, these, all the law enforcement officers you see on TV, although all, all crimes are commercial crimes, so I have a hard time understanding how they're calling themselves law enforcement when all crimes are commercial crimes, like I've showed you. But I kind of shattered my image of the good guy hero on TV that, that saves the day and catches the bad guy when every law that they ever try to enforce in America that comes from this jurisdiction is more unlawful than the criminal they're supposedly locking up for it. Well, I'm Bruce Ray Riggs. Enjoy my video.